Hey viewers, my name's Kara. I'm your Tuesday host on The Pagan Perspective, and this week we're talking about how we learn correspondences and associations. I will put the full context of the question in the description so you can read it, but this week's question comes from a person who has had the experience of a group inviting new members to come and see what the group is about before they join. And they have observed that people who have practiced solitarily beforehand and come in with their own pre-established connections and correspondences and associations for things are sometimes really shocked at the different interpretations. So because of that, the question is how do we go about learning what different things mean to us, and they asked specifically about pantheons, crystals, and complexity of herbs. So firstly, because I have practiced solitarily most of the time, I should know exactly what this is about, but actually in my experience at least, and I don't know if it's just because of the books that I have happened to pick up, or the people that I've happened to talk to, or just the way my brain works and picks up certain information, but for whatever reason it has always been my experience since I started studying on my own that sources really prepare you for the fact that there are going to be differences. I really don't think I've come across anything as far as a book that says these are the only things that are representative of this subject matter, whatever it is you're looking up. Oftentimes, if there are tables of correspondences in the back of something that I've read, it says these are the author's personal correspondences. Feel free to add your own different ones if you know different ones. Feel free to take some out if you have found some to not be helpful, stuff like that. So I've seen lists that say this is what goes along with this, this is what goes along with this, but it kind of sets it up that this is only this one person's interpretation and you can feel free to take that list and then add to it or remove from it. Also, a lot of people that I've spoken to kind of have that same feeling that you should feel free to take from other people's experience as a starting point and then figure it out from there for yourself. So I'm actually a little bit shocked myself that someone would be so completely shocked that there are differences because I think we are told time and again that there are differences. Maybe you could be shocked at what the differences are if it's just so left field to you, but I feel that people should be pretty well prepared for the fact that not everyone is going to do the same thing they are, but that's just me, so clearly I have not had the same experience as those people. So how do I learn different things? I read a lot, and I don't mean that I'm constantly reading. There are still a ton of books that I have yet to read, and a ton of websites, and etc. But I do try to read quite a bit, and I always try to read different sources and different materials and different authors. I also talk to people about subjects or I read what other people have to say on their blogs about their experiences with these things. And then I also kind of go with what I feel beyond that. Like once I have what it's kind of supposed to be or what other people think it is, then I kind of find my own correspondences based on which one feels right to me. And I do go through a bit of trial and error with that. But I'll start with the three that you talked about specifically or mentioned. How do we learn pantheons? I actually don't <laughs> very much. I haven't done very much with learning different deities yet, and that's kind of a couple steps on for me. One thing I have learned is that if I try and come up with like a curriculum or schedule for myself where I'm gonna learn this this day at this time or I'm gonna learn this this month and whatever, I can't really do that. I don't have such good luck with that because if I plan to get it and it turns out it's just not the right time for me, I just, I can't do it. I have no interest in it at the time or other things take over. So I've really had to pick what I do when by when I feel that it's time for me to learn something new. So I haven't done very much work with pantheons, but I have a book called The Goddess. It's a living wisdom book, and it has a lot of history of different goddess stories throughout history, so I have read that. I have a book of Greek mythology, so that definitely helps me out with that one. So reading books, and then also if I develop a specific interest in a certain deity at one given time, I will look up different websites that have a lot of information about them. And I also just kind of gather information about different deities when I'm reading blogs, and people really like to blog about their experiences with their deities. So I read those, and I ask questions if something comes up, and it, it hasn't been very formal yet, but 
I gather information that way of how does this person feel about how they work with this deity, and then if I find someone else who happens to work with the same deity, how do they feel about it? So those are my two main ways of that, reading books and then blogs. Crystals, I kind of do the same thing. I have a spreadsheet made up to keep track of my associations and knowledge about crystals and herbs. So for crystals, I have several different books that supposedly tell you what everything is, and then I also have the internet, the wonderful world of the internet, and I mostly start by looking at like four or five different sources from books and online and I cross-reference them to find out what is common between all of the sources and so I start by figuring out what do most sources agree upon for this crystal or this herb. What is pretty much common knowledge about these things and I kind of take that as a starting point. And then I look at what's different between the sources because I think that tells me a lot whether this source thinks something but this other one doesn't or if they have an opposing viewpoint of it. And then for crystals specifically I also know a lot of people who work with crystals regularly, YouTube videos, as well as some people at the Medieval Fair who mine their own crystals and so their entire business is knowing crystals. So they've picked up a lot more associations and things than maybe I could find in a book. So if I go up to them and I'm holding a stone and they're telling me things about it, I tend to remember that more. And then for herbs, it's kind of the same thing, but I don't talk to people as much about it, but I look it up in different books. I have several books that talk about herbs and their different properties and then the web. For my crystals and herbs also specifically, I start with crystals and herbs that I own because I think it's most important to know how to use what I already have and then once I have kind of a, at least a basic working knowledge of those, then I might go on to look up something that I don't yet own just to know what it's about. Or if I've seen it a lot in a book mentioned a lot for ingredients or something, I'll look it up. But mostly if I don't own it, I don't know that much about it yet. But like I said, it's also largely trial and error, and this one comes to mind a lot for the associations of the four directions and the four elements and the four tools that you would use for them. Or I guess I could say the five. The first book I ever read said that your altar goes in the north, and then another book that I read said the altar goes in the east, and that's all it said, and so I just felt to me that north was better, so that's what I did. Years later, like just a couple of years ago, I found a source that explained why they think their altar should go in the east, and then that explanation made a lot of sense to me, so then I started trying, starting my search circle in the east and moving around to end in the north, which I found, based on that explanation that they gave, made more sense to me than starting in the north. So I tried keeping my altar in the east and everything of that nature, and what it's turned out to be after having tried it several times is that I start a sunwise circle in the east because I like that explanation, but I still keep my altar in the north because I like that. But I did, I definitely did change a bit of my correspondences with that based on what I read and then I tried it to see if I liked it and if I don't like it, I stopped doing it. So I don't think anyone should really feel hesitant about just trying something at least once. I tried having a blade represent the east and air and having my wand represent fire and south and that just doesn't jive with me so I went back to what I did before. Things like that where a lot of sources have like two or more different opinions on it. I just try it out and then figure out what I feel is best. So look at a lot of different sources, books, and websites. If you can, try and find different individuals' views on what they feel about these different things. If someone has had a drastically different experience working with a crystal than something that you've ever seen, try it out with that in mind and see if you get that feeling from that crystal. See what effects different herbs have on you, different oils and scents. See what happens if you use a purple candle instead of a white candle. And then also think about experiences from your personal life. What does the color yellow really mean? to you. Or maybe someone in your family used to wear pearl earrings all the time and so pearl has a different significance to you than it would to anyone else who just picks one up and reads out of a book what it's supposed to mean. But I definitely think looking up what other people think about it is helpful for a start and then add in what you feel. Try it out, see if you like it. That's just the way I do things, but then again, we were asked for our opinion, so that's what you get. It is Tuesday afternoon right now as I'm recording this, so I need to hurry up and edit it and post it 
for you before I go to work. I didn't do this video yesterday because I was editing a few more England videos, so I'm just that much closer to being able to post those. And by that much closer, I mean I'm a third of the way done. Maybe less than a third. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, thank you for the question, and I will see you guys next time. Blessed be, and goodbye.